I was walking through the cafeteria and I saw Sharif Clinton, who graduated last year. Sharif was bigger than I am. He was 6'4", 6'5", 260, big weightlifter football player. And he had two ounces of chicken nuggets, which was four. And that was his whole lunch. And he was saying, Mr. Moore, begging me, I, you know, what, what, I can't eat this. I got to play football after school. And in fact, I was concerned because Realistically, if that's the last time you eat and then you have to go to practice and you're that big, that's a problem. Harry S. Truman, home of the Tigers. But every Tiger needs to eat. Harry S. Truman's been serving school lunch as well since, since it was first established. But there are many unanswered questions surrounding the school lunch that we just don't know the answers to. And we're here to ask those questions. We found some various students and teachers from around the school. And we asked them to rate the school lunch on a scale from 1 to 10. Here's what we got. Uh, three. Three. Two. Four. Two. Three. Three. Four. Five. Negative five. Like five. Two. Three. I'd say around three. I'd say one. Two. I'd say it's probably about an eight right now, overall. We were surprised to find that reviews were generally mixed. People either loved the school lunch or they hated it. So we decided to ask some follow-up questions to figure out why. We decided the best way to do this was to ask students what their favorite and least favorite lunches were. What is your favorite school lunch? Um, and what is your least favorite school lunch? Um, what is your favorite school lunch? Fine. Cheese sticks. What is your least favorite school lunch? Okay, all of it. What is your favorite school lunch? Probably the Huggies. What is your least favorite school lunch? Everything else. Everything else is too oily. What is your favorite school lunch? The buff yeah, buffalo chicken wrap. What is your least favorite? Snacks and zips, definitely. Favorite school lunch. <laughs> the buffalo chicken wrap. What is your least favorite? Everything else but the buffalo chicken wrap. Okay, what's your favorite school lunch? Chicken nuggets. What's your least favorite? What's your favorite school lunch? Chicken patty. Least favorite school lunch? Pizza. What would be your favorite school lunch? Pizza uh, salad. What would you be your least favorite school lunch? I <laughs> potato fries and potatoes. What's your favorite school lunch? My favorite school lunch actually has to be Casey. What's your least favorite school lunch? Spaghetti and meatballs. So what do you think about the school lunch? Here's some stuff from the health teachers and what they had to say on it. What is your favorite school lunch that you've tried? That I've tried? I try not to eat the school lunch, if that means anything, but I will get a salad now and then. I wish they would bring the salad bar back that they used to have at Ben Franklin. Mm. That would be awesome. Then we could pick what we wanted instead of the stuff that they put in. And what would be your least favorite thing that you've tried, if any? The chicken patty ham. They make it into a hamburger patty, whatever. I don't think it's real chicken. Can you rate our school lunch on a scale of 1 to 10? On a scale of 1 to 10. Um, I mean, what I have to base it off of is you know, feedback from the students. Um, I'd say it's pretty much split down the middle. Some students seem to like it. Some, you know, I think it's a pretty common argument. Um, I think it's always going to be an argument. And students always want certain things for lunch that just aren't going to happen. Um, I do think they have made some, some really good improvements, um, healthy-wise, appealing-wise to students. So I, I'd say it's probably about an eight right now, overall. What is your favorite school lunch that you've had so far? Favorite school lunch that I had? Um, I personally enjoy salads. Um, you know, I get a salad down at the one part of the cafeteria now, um, at least like once a week. And I, I know certain schools, and I believe this school used to have a salad bar available for the students, and that would be pretty cool to see that. I think a lot of students would enjoy that. What is your least favorite school lunch, if you've least had one? Least favorite school lunch? Um, I'm not a huge fan of, like, cheesesteaks and stuff. So, that's probably my least favorite. And then, if there was one thing you'd change, what would it be? Um, probably the availability of the snack stand. We sat down with Mr. Whip to find out more. Sure. Can you please tell us how long you've been in this district and what your job is? I am the food service director for Bristol Township School District. Uh, I have been doing it for about 20 years. 
and uh, my uh, position requires me to uh, meet and or succeed the uh, exceed rather uh, the national school lunch programs requirements. What does the standard Bristol Township school district lunch consist of? The uh, the standard uh, well everything has changed over the last uh, several years. Uh, the standards uh, require it is done on a weekly basis and it must be broken down in a nutrient analysis. We must offer so much in the way of protein and one of the things that's been very controversial about the new program versus what we've done in the past is that the size requirements have been reduced. Now the uh, USDA has been backing off of that somewhat but when they first started it it was a weekly average which was very small so some days you would only have two or less than three ounces of protein. We must also offer a milk. We must also offer uh, fruit and vegetable as well as some type of grain. And the current program uh, pushes whole grain, which is healthy for you, and it has a different consistency and it takes some getting used to. Um, but uh, that is, is a difference too. They have been backing off on the quantity. Uh, one of the problems that we've had not just in Bristol Township, but all over the United States, uh, has been that uh, when you get a, a person my size, and a lot of your students, uh, especially the guys, football team, so on, are much larger than I, uh, giving them just two ounces of protein or limiting to them to a small amount of bread per week uh, doesn't necessarily work out. What percentage of the food is prepared fresh in the kitchen of the schools? The uh, Truman, uh, everything is prepared here. Uh, however, the days where we come in and do roast beefs on the uh, uh, on our own, uh, most of the things that are high quality, uh, we're part of a bid bid that covers probably, uh, I'm guessing, 50 or 60 school districts. We all use the same products. We bid those products, and a lot of times those products are commodities, which is a whole different story, which I'd be happy to talk to you about. Uh, but everything is cooked here. It is not shipped in, uh, but a lot of it is not from scratch like mom might do at home. A lot of the things that we do, some of it is from scratch, but a lot of the things that we do are, are frozen entrees that we bring in uh, of quality. Again, it's done on a bid, and it's the same products done uh, or served in probably every school district uh, in the state, if not the United States. Many staff and students have told us they miss a salad bar at Ben Franklin. Would you ever consider bringing this option back in the future? Uh, yeah, I was one of the uh, subjects that we had. When we opened the school this year, uh, or last year actually, we moved the ninth graders over and space became an issue as to how we would serve it. If you were to recall, the, the line on the far from here on the far right uh, was our salad bar. Uh, but there became other issues. Uh, not only was space an issue, but the requirements of the school lunch changed. If you were, we talked a little bit about it earlier, where we talked about having protein. And when we were having this protein, and before when we had the salad bar, we just let people go down and pick whatever they want, uh, and they could take as much as they wanted. But under the new requirements, they were not allowed to do so. So we would have to control somehow how much uh, protein, egg or ham or whatever that, that a student would put on the lunch to meet the requirements. Uh, so there are some changes in it. We couldn't go back to totally doing it the way we did it before, but we could prepackage some of the protein and allow you to take uh, fruits or vegetables uh, because there is no limitation on those. Is there anything else you would like to share at this time? Just that we're, we're very proud of the service that we provide. We serve over a million meals a year, and we do it safely. And I don't want to jinx myself, and I don't have any wood, so I'll knock on wood here, that uh, we do it every day. Um, we serve meals, and, we, and like I said before, we got our complaint ratio down to almost none. Um, but now the, cons the, the complaints that we have received, for the most part, have been uh, based on the new requirements of which I have no control. Uh, we are serving things that not necessarily a student would want, um, and that becomes the issue. We want your input, and we will certainly take any, any complaints seriously. 
we will try to work with you, and we will try to work with, with the student uh, population here because you are our customer. After interviewing Mr. Webb, Mr. Moore had a few things he wanted to share. In fact, it wasn't Greece. It was the consistency of the product because, in, on the contrary to Greece, it was so lean because they used turkey for much of the we products. Turkey for nachos. Well, turkey is not a very fatty meat, even if they put the dark meat in. Yeah. So what they were seeing was the runoff of really the taco sauce, mm -hmm. which is discolored and thin like grease, but there's no grease because it's turkey, or minimal grease because it's turkey. So the, it is, however, by everyone's admission, not the most appetizing food that you'll see. So when you have pizza, made on whole grain bread, it just doesn't look like the pizza you get anywhere, right? And it doesn't taste like it, and you're saying, wow, this is not, it's pizza that's good for you. So now you have, you're going the other way. It's much like eat your vegetables or anything else. If you're not paying attention to what you're eating, you know, then, then you start to say, oh, this is, this is not good. On the contrary, it's probably much more healthier than any sliced pizza you ever had, but it's also much less appetizing. So while we, we're thinking that the food is poorly prepared because it doesn't taste like we want, there's not as much of it as they want. In the interest of full disclosure, I don't eat lunch a lot. So when I'm here, I'm, I'm not always having lunch. Uh, in the past, when I first became a principal, when I was at an elementary school, I would go get two slices of bread, the peanut butter and the jelly, which were all nicely packaged by the, the, uh, the cafeteria and would go to my office and I could make myself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which I, which I happen to like. But now, because of the peanut allergies, we're peanut free, so I don't have that option. And then when I came to Truman, I loved the salad bar, because I could go and I happened to like the pickles they had. So I would have the salad, they had the pickles and a nice scoop of tuna. I had tuna almost every time that I had it. And that was some peppers and that was good, that was the salad. Well, without that, I don't really have, uh, I don't eat as much as I do. And the, and the cost for us is, more than the cost for students. I pay the adult price, so it's like four dollars or whatever for the adults and for the, you know, I get the same lunch and it's the same breakdown. We're all fed the same. No more, everything is done according to, according to the law. So as a consumer, the faculty is probably not eating as much as they used to, and I know that I've talked to Mr. Webb about that as not, so um, how do we get all the students through the line when you have a, de a dedicated salad bar line is the problem. We would need there to be 25% of the students eating the salad bar, and I'm not quite sure that the data suggests that, and then otherwise you'd have that line in the cafeteria for most of the period. Um, but what I wanted to say to kind of sum it up is that I, I grew up in, uh, in a time when student activism was, uh, was a, a common part of what you did. Students asked questions of authority respectfully. If students didn't like what they said, they often questioned authority and they would come up and they would say why and they would continue to ask. And there was a lot of things that later on carried out that turned into some social consciousness. And a lot of the changes that occurred down the road often started with these kinds of activities. So um, I appreciate your efforts. I think that this kind of a uh, respectful and, and unbiased look at why things are happening is important and I encourage uh, students to do this. I think it's a good idea and I think that um, uh, it opens up a dialogue and, and what we're hoping to do is possibly, uh, and I've spoken to, to Mr. Baraj about that, is start a uh, student advisory council where we'll ask students to be participate and bring us these kinds of issues that, uh, that are on your minds and give you some input into how we make those things. And I know that one of the first things we're gonna talk about is the the cafeteria and Mr. Webb and how do we work out getting some access to salad bar. And that would, be, uh, that would be something I think we would be able to solve within this and still stay within the constraints of the, uh, the programs as they're, as they're indicated, you know, uh, and as he's indicated. This is something that's not going away anytime soon. So um, that would be something positive that probably would not be on our minds if it were not for this type of questioning. Good for you.